Good morning. Day 20. Start of the Smoky Mountains. So, uh, we stayed last night at the Fontana Village resort thing. It's like a it's like a whole resort made up of the old town of the workers who built the Fontana Dam, which we'll be going over shortly. Um, it was really nice. We got her. Uh, would definitely be somewhere I'd want to come back to, like in the summer or something, just to spend a bit more time there. You know, I had like a nice, nice pool, loads of nice little cabins, different activities. Um, but yeah, we just got, we just drove down, packed into the shuttle, uh, which cost five dollars, even though we just spent one hundred and thirty dollars on a room. But never mind, I'm, that's uh, me being stingy. Uh, so drove down in the shuttle got dropped off back off at the marina and we're now walking the what the sign said one mile the far out says two it's, the truth is likely somewhere in the middle um, the rest of the trail up to and across Fontana Dam before dropping our permits in the uh, hiker box at the start of the Smoky Mountains so the weather looks a little cloudy today, but hopefully it should not actually fully rain. Um, and the weather for the next few days looks very cold, but quite clear at least. So, um, yeah, we should be fine. We've kind of we've caught up with some uh, caught up with some of the friends that we were hiking with in the right at the beginning. So, there's, uh, we've got Stir Crazy, Wonder Woman. Mr. Atlas Worldwide. <laughs> uh, we caught up with young Neil. Uh, I think Okie Doki's parents uh, with the dog, uh, one day behind us. Um, sort of fallen in with another group that were all staying at the at the resort. So there's kind of a, a race to the first shelter going on. Um, <laughs> So that's the rule in the Smokies, you have to stay in the shelter until it fills up before camping around it. So um, the shelters are usually bigger, but you but they get crowded quite quickly. So um, yeah, we'll see how we see how we fare today. It's a lot of uphill climbing out of the dam. So we'll see how we get on. But yeah. I'll show you some views over the edge of the dam and hopefully I don't drop my phone. finished with our climb out of Fontana up to Shuckstack Fire Tower. Um, there's just something cool that I've noticed. So like I I go on holiday and go walking quite a lot in uh, in North Wales in Snowdonia and 
one of the cool things like um, about the Appalachian mountain range is basically because it's obviously it's ancient but it's basically the part of the mountain range that ran through is it Pangaea the main mm -hmm. the big supercontinent before everything broke up and uh, some of the highlands in Scotland and I think Snowdonia as well was part of that so it's quite cool when you see stuff like you know you see this kind of like slate and this kind of rock is very familiar which is quite cool but you know it doesn't have <laughs> there's no views like this but uh, yeah it's pretty incredible so yeah when we get up to the fire tower we'll see if our legs will carry us up the stairs it nope. looks quite rickety mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks quite narrow so we'll uh, Help me out. Well, we'll definitely have lunch there at least just whether we'll go up to the top or not we don't know I might you won't I might we'll find out okay so we are heading down from shock stack the fire tower and I have no views to show you because I chickened out <laughs> I got up the uh, the first set of stairs and realized that a lot of the other set of stairs just didn't have like handrails and just there was no like you know whenever you took a step even on the lowest stairs the whole tower was like swaying and I was suddenly very aware of how tired my legs were from the <laughs> from the climb up from Fontana so yeah I didn't I didn't go up the tower someone came down who did go up and was like oh that's very <laughs> like that's a bit dodgy like the floorboards are like damp and you can see through them and some are split so like probably a good thing I didn't go up anyway we've got about six miles to the first shelter that we can stop at um, and we think we're at the back of a pack so it could be very busy when we get there so we'll see but still some incredible views around and these blow downs which we still have to deal with but oh well oh, right let me get over this without breaking my neck oh, well this is a little anticlimactic <laughs> but we've just crossed into Tennessee I don't know I thought this would be like tomorrow or something but it's today they haven't there's no signs we've just checked the map and realized the border is sort of like well just that bit of trail there <laughs> um so yeah we're in our third state i guess they don't really make much of a fuss of it because the trail kind of the ridge that the trail goes along now through the smokies is basically the border between north carolina and tennessee so we're not done with north carolina we'll basically be crossing this border daily <laughs> like multiple times a day probably as the trail zigzags across so but yeah, just entered our our third state. You excited? Yeah. You excited to see what Tennessee brings? Ooh, bears. Privies? No, not privies. No, no privies. No privies. No. So apparently, the way you can tell if your shelter along in the Smokies, if your shelter is in Tennessee or North Carolina, is apparently is if it has a privy or not. So the North Carolina ones do, but Tennessee has a weird law. Well, it's not weird it's a valid law that if you build public bathrooms they have to be wheelchair accessible and they never made any exemptions for privies in the woods so the so rather than trying to make a privy handicap like accessible on a trail at 5,000 feet up in the middle of the woods they just decided to not put them in and not deal with the red tape so if we're in North Carolina, privies. Luxury. If we're in Tennessee, break out the trowels. Sad. <laughs> anyway, we've got about three miles or so to our shelter. And we'll find out how busy it is when we get there. So let's have a look. Patrick's Day. 
I think I think that's today. I don't know, I think so. Anyway, we are uh, about an hour or so into the day. We've done a little over two miles uh, from Molly's Ridge Shelter where we spent the night. Where fortunately there was space for us to get a spot in the shelter. It was quite cold uh, last night, so that was appreciated. Um, we're going about 12 miles today, uh, which should put us uh, in reach tomorrow of getting to two big milestones. Uh, I'm going to stop here because I'm already out of breath. Um, so we've got two big uh, milestones tomorrow, potentially, um, depending on how we do. But... Uh, we're hoping to get to mile 200 tomorrow uh, as well as to go up and over Klingman's Dome which is the highest point on the Appalachian Trail so it's like 6,600 feet or something um, it's quite weird that you know the highest point is just ahead of us because you look at all the footage and pictures of other parts of the trail like the White Mountains and you know all of New Hampshire and Maine and it's like they look like big mountains but they're just I guess they're more like they're just more prominent so they look taller whereas the ones here were kind of just on a tall ridge and then there's just one of these bumps happens to be the highest point so um yeah that'd be cool I'll resist making the oh it's all downhill from here <laughs> joke at the tire point so not gonna, not gonna be that guy. I might be that guy. We'll find out. Uh, but yeah, so exciting milestones tomorrow. Hopefully, we just need to get to our intended shelter today with a lot of up and down, uh, and yeah, about ten miles still to go. So twelve in total today. But yeah, I'll bring you along. Hello. We've just had our lunch at uh, Spencer Creek. Is it? Something like that. Spencer yeah. Creek, Spencer Trail or something. Uh, I just say the shelters in the the shelters in the Smokies are very nice. Like they're like old stone buildings, and they've just put like new roofs on a lot of them and stuff. Um, this one was in North Carolina, which means it has a privy, as I think I explained yesterday. So that was nice. It was worth the six mile walk for that. It was a very nice privy. The nicest. <laughs> the nicest privy we've seen can recommend um but yeah we've got another six miles to go it's only just gone midday so we've made really good time this morning um so we've got another six miles to Derek knob shelter uh the next bit we just have to climb up over something called thunderhead mountain so i think that should be the high point of the day um i think it's over there but i don't know it's, there's so many peaks around i don't know which one it is but we'll, we'll find out soon enough all right, we're just at a, a viewpoint on the way up to Thunderhead Mountain. It's pretty cool you can see our progress. I don't know if you can really make out, but just down here is the Fontana Lake and the dam. And then about here is the fire tower. So that whole ridge is what we climbed up the first day to about just behind this. Oh, can't focus just behind this mountain is where we sheltered so we obviously come along the ridge up over here and to where we are now so pretty cool when you get these uh, views you can actually see the progress you've made even though the dam is like right there and I can see it and it felt like forever to get up here but you know oh well let's press on hello alright finally made it to the shelter uh, the last like three or four miles took forever because it was like the first six we did really quickly because like the, there's more ascent but it was like you know gradual over longer distance whereas this when we got there and we're looking at it, it was like oh it's two three hundred feet of ascent that's fine we did like 800 this morning but it was like that 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 and just up and down up and down so it seems like everyone had a had a tough time with it. it's not just us so we're in the shelter now, so... Uh, yeah. 
So we're putting on every warm layer we have because tonight is supposed to go down to about, what's someone say, 18 Fahrenheit? Which, if you heard 18 and you're British, you're like, oh, easy. That's bad, apparently. That's, uh, that's like minus seven or eight or something Celsius. So it's going to be very freezing. Um, so, yeah. We might light a fire in the shelter. There's like a, a little fireplace. There is an actual chimney. It's not like we're just setting a fire in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, just uh, have a read of the uh, have a read of the rules. There's some interesting interesting additions people have made to this one. But oh well, yeah. Looking forward to what may be a very cold night. But we can get changed, get some dinner, sleep, and pray we wake up in the morning. Able to move. Able to move. I was going to say able to move our fingers or something, not just... <laughs> Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning on our incredibly cold start to the day. I think last night was the coldest it got. Uh, it went down to... <clears throat> uh, well, everyone was talking in Fahrenheit, so... I don't speak American, so it was like 15 Fahrenheit, which... I think is about less, about minus seven or something like that. Uh, but there's quite a few people in the shelter and there was a big tarp across the door so it kind of helped a bit. It was just very tough getting out of bed, getting ready this morning. Uh, tonight is also, uh, this, well I've had a few choices today, so tonight <coughs> is going to get down to uh, minus, uh, well, in Celsius, you're going to get down to minus 20 <laughs> with wind chill. <laughs> so that was certainly the coldest I've ever experienced. But that's like genuinely like dangerous temperatures to be outside. So it's kind of two options. There's a shelter at 13 miles, which we've checked. <clears throat> it does have like a big tarp over the entrance so you can kind of seal it up so you can kind of negate some of that wind chill and it's like one of these stone structures so you can have a fire inside um, with the chimney so hopefully if we get there hopefully the wind and the cold won't be too bad I mean, it'll still be cold but survivable <laughs> um, the other option that some people are doing is pushing 18 miles to get to Newfound Gap to get a lift into Gatlinburg and stay at a hotel for the night. But just physically, I don't think I'm capable of doing 18 miles yet, especially not today. Um, so today is at minimum at least, at least 13 miles, like I say, but the first 10 is all uphill. Uh, up to both the 200 mile mark and Clingman's Dome. Um, which, if it stays as clear, it's cold, but if it's clear as, as it is today, as it is right now, I mean, uh, we should hopefully have some interesting, you know, some good views from the highest point on the AT. So, just enjoying this little bit of downhill now before the real grind begins. Alright, see you in a bit. Okay, quick update. It has warmed up a little. Unfortunately, although whether that's because it's actually warmer or we're just warming up from the, the hike, I don't know, I'm unsure. But I just uh, we just went past a load of, uh, you know, it's like a big thick area of trees and bushes. I just heard like this big cracking noise and something, sounded like something running off into the, like down the hill. I didn't see anything. I stood around for a while to see if we could see anything, but no. I'm just like, we're supposedly in this like, most biodiverse national park, and I've seen nothing. No, that's not true. I did glimpse the arse end of a deer, but as soon as I rounded a corner, it just sprinted off. So, I don't think that really counts. But, yeah, I was talking to other people at camp, like other people, other people have seen, like, a pack of wild boars running around. Other people have seen like wild turkeys. Uh, see Scare Bear and Eminem 
on the like the first day pretty much in North Carolina saw a bear I'm just like oh, when is it my turn so yeah, just gotta keep my eyes peeled and hopefully we'll see something interesting <laughs> yeah we're about less than seven miles now from Klingman's Dome and the 200 mile mark so oh, thank you good progress slow but steady progress all right so we are about two miles now from Klingman's Dome and the 200 mile mark uh, we just stopped for a quick break and lunch at a shelter you should realize just how cold it is when you stop as soon as you stop moving and just immediately like <laughs> started shivering so I'm trying to keep moving as much as possible um, pretty much as soon as we get to the shelter tonight we're gonna try and you know get a fire going but just look at this uh, almost as soon as we went over 6,000 feet like the forest is just so much so much more dense that you can't see out of it and it's like you know it just feels like more like old growth forest I don't know if it actually is but like you see like there's just so much more moss growing on everything it's all just so much more dense there's a lot more like pine trees as well and coniferous trees and but yeah it's just interesting how quickly it kind of changed as soon as we got up to to this altitude but yeah and anyway like I say two miles to go oh, it's gonna be windy I can tell ah oh, okay we're at this sign which is telling us there's a bypass if there's bad weather to go that way <laughs> uh, but what else is this 200 miles yeah it's the 200 mile mark. Oh, there's no sign or anything, but <laughs> it does say on it does say on the map that this is the 200 mile mark. So, oh, it's our three week hiking anniversary. Started three weeks ago. I've done 200 miles. How'd you feel? Feel good. I was just gonna say tired. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, we got about. Uh, what's that say? 0.3 miles up to the actual tower at the top of Clayman's Dome. So there's like a viewing platform up there. And luckily, the clouds are about, the cloud base is about 1,500 to 2,000 feet higher than us. So we will actually have some views. So I think it was one of the, one of the few, there's a few places along the trail that I was like, I really want to have nice weather when I get there. Like, Franconia Ridge, obviously Katahdin at the end, um, Mount Washington, and Clingman's Dome was one of them. And it looks like we've, that first one has been granted, so maybe the rest will, well, we'll see how the rest go, but <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this one for now. Oh, Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's not that much of a shortcut. We could go back. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. looks a lot smaller than it does it in does, videos. Doesn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So this is pretty cool. Hopefully you can hear this, but so over there, that mountain in the middle is Standing Indian, which is, at least according to this sign, as the crow flies, it's 37 miles away. But hiking distance is now 100 miles away, which is pretty cool. I am one frosty boy. Oh, 
last night was uh, interesting. <laughs> so we got to the shelter and fortunately the, the tarp that was across the entrance was like a really heavy duty tarp that was like properly anchored and weighed down across the whole entrance to keep the wind out because I don't know what we'd have done <laughs> if that wasn't there <laughs> and we knew it was there from the, the the far out description so but oh my god I forgot to empty my water bottles so those are now just blocks of ice uh, <laughs> I did remember to sleep with my filter and electronics those didn't die but yeah got down at least outside the shelter to minus 20 celsius uh, inside well it's obviously certainly below freezing but stayed warm enough in our sleeping bags with all our layers uh, so now uh, I've just got to get back half a mile to the trail because the shelter is off trail uh, and yeah we got initially at least five miles down to Newfound Gap and then uphill to a choice of we've got a few different shelters we don't know what we're going to do yet but we're just going to see how we warm up so uh, I'm going to keep moving I'll try and get some blood moving through me <laughs> happy uh -huh. we're at newfound gap and some hikers what do you say some hikers that were in town no, i think they're through hikers and they were they went into town oh okay and they got some food and then gave us a giant the rest of their giant cinnamon roll <laughs> so we're gonna pick at that for a bit uh, just try and warm up a bit <laughs> okay so we've just climbed out of newfound gap and our water worries were solved by a lovely woman and her family who uh, gave us some sodas and bottled water to keep us going, which is nice. We're slightly bending a rule of not walking exactly on the trail because, I don't know if you can see, but the trail is basically an ice rink. <laughs> like, it's just solid ice all the way down. So we're just walking alongside it for now so that we don't slide down the mountain anyway uh, about to have get to another shelter we're just gonna have another quick break refill our now defrosted water bottles okay north carolina i have a bone to pick with you so i remember i was like a few days ago when we crossed into smokies and i was like so oh here's a fun fact like tennessee ones don't have privies and like the North Carolina ones do because of some weird law. Like, in my hubris, I thought I would be able to get away without digging any cat holes. So, like, any time we stayed at a shelter in Tennessee, you know, we were able to hold our needs until we got to a shelter in North Carolina which had a privy. And we've just tried that again today. And not only is the privy here full, use your imagination as to what that means, but also is physically nailed shut. So I have been caught out by a North Carolina shelter. And I don't know if you've ever tried to dig a cat hole according to the correct leave no trace principles of six inches deep and like three or four inches across. Have you ever tried to do that in frozen earth that is full of roots with a tiny lightweight titanium trowel? Then, you know, you have my sympathies if you have because you've just experienced what i had to so you're welcome for the oversharing anyway we've stopped at this shelter just for a quick break um but i think we're going to push on another six 7. seven seven miles so the seven miles 
gets us to a shelter at lower elevation, which hopefully means it shouldn't be frozen. Um, but that also sets up an exit from the Smokies on Thursday. So we do, it would be a 15 today, 13 tomorrow, and 11 miles on Thursday, ending hopefully at Standing Bear Hostel, and where I think we'll take our second, like, proper zero day. So you're welcome for the uh, overshare of information, but there we go. I'm nothing if not brutally honest about my experience on trail, so let me know down below if I'm being too honest. You know, <laughs> there's too much information. Anyway, uh, right, I'm gonna have some water and then we're gonna get back, uh, get back on the road. Starting our day very much later than we normally do. Uh, it's we started about an hour and a half later. Um, yesterday was a, a real long day, very cold. Um, today, well, just because it was so long and we were so tired, we slept in quite a bit because it wasn't. Well, it was cold, but it wasn't as cold, so it was like just nice to just lie in a little bit in the morning. And just take things a bit slower um, but today uh, we are doing 13 miles so um, the plan is there's still well there's still the plan we can't talk about yesterday is 13 miles today giving us an 11 mile day to exit the Smokies tomorrow and get to Standing Bear Hostel so we're hoping that if we can leave early enough tomorrow we shouldn't have any problems getting a space. Um, but the only thing we're debating now is whether or not we zero at Standing Bear or whether we just um, stay there for the night, you know, have a shower, uh, just, you know, put our feet up for a bit and then push to Hot Springs and zero there because there's quite a few different hostels there. Um, that all sound quite good and um, in, even like one like old like 1800s man, manor house type thing that apparently hikers can stay out which sounds interesting so yeah we haven't decided what we're going to do yet but we're kind of going to just focus on getting out of the Smokies and then we'll just see what the weather's doing because if it's going to be torrential you know, on the Friday, Saturday or something, we might just want to, we could just wait it out. If it's only going to be like light rain or something, then it's worth kind of pushing on and zeroing in hot springs. So we'll, we'll see what we end up doing, but yeah, we'll uh, just need to get a move on since so we left so late today. So yeah, onwards and upwards, scratch that and back. Literally the moment I, <laughs> the moment I just started filming that last clip, we just came across this on the ground. We're 10% done. Oh yeah. So yeah. We just have to do that nine more times. So this must be what, 20, 219 miles, 220. Well, 10% down. How'd you feel? Well, considering I had a sharp pain in my head this morning, not too bad where it's going. Oh. Will that be the abiding memory of the 10% mark? Okay. Let's do the other 90. Okay, it's that way. You go first. Sure. Yeah.
Well, we made it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I felt really good today. Mm -hmm. Like, we started late. Very late. Very late. Well, we started very late compared to what we normally do, but we actually made really good time. And I don't know about you, but I was, especially like towards the end of the day, mm. I was like still just going. Yeah. And like even when we got to the climbs, like even when we got to the climbs, like I slowed down, but I didn't stop. Like I just kind of just kept up the pace, you know, slowed down a little bit, but kept up yeah. walking. And uh, yeah, that's the first, I think that's the first day I've had where I felt properly comfortable all day. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, the weather was nice, the terrain was good. Yeah. Um, I think if we didn't have to camp here, I could have done it a little bit more. Yeah. You know? That's the thing, yeah, because we, we are limited by the shelters in the Smokies, like you have to stay at them, so. But yeah, we've got 11 miles-ish into Standing Bear tomorrow. Stay at the, the hippie hostel. And then... Yeah, then a few days more onto Hot Springs. So I think what we're going to do is stay at Standing Bear just for the night and then continue the day after, even if it rains, and just do a proper zero in, fr in, in Hot Springs. So I think there'll probably be more to do yeah. and more options for like good food and stuff and resupply. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. We'll see you tomorrow then. Okay. okay, last day in the Smokies. So we've just done about two miles or so from the uh, from the shelter. We've got about eight more down to Davenport Gap, which is where the uh, the trail exits the Smoky Mountains. Uh, so I've got eight miles to see a bear or something interesting. <laughs> I think because we've been so early, it's been so cold and been so like early in the year. There's not been too much like big wildlife out and about, you know. But I'd love to come back in like, love to come back one day in like spring and summer and see it like fully come to life. But you know, the views have been incredible regardless. Like the actual panoramas and the fact we had like Clingman Stone to ourselves and there's been like hardly anyone around us on the trail has been really nice. But uh, you'll have to take my word for some of the views. I think it's uh, I've been lacking on the uh, on the old B-roll. Just because it's been so cold, I didn't want to like take my <laughs> take my gloves off, take my phone out just for like six seconds, and then put everything back. So, you know, if you want to see what it looks like, just Google it or something. I don't know. But or come here yourself. Or, yeah, or just come here yourself. It's a very privileged thing to say there, Korok. <laughs> just just come here. This is fine. Yeah, it's Check your privilege. <laughs> just Google it. It'll be fine. Anyway, yeah, eight miles, and then we'll get to Standing Bear Hostel. I'm going to stay there tonight. Interested by some of the reviews and the way some people on trail have been talking about it. They're like, it's kind of more of a commune or a hippie commune than a, than a hostel, so this should be interesting. But I think we're just going to spend the one night here and just shower and just enjoy a real bed and then push on through the bad weather in the next few days to get to Hot Springs and take a proper day off there. So hopefully that'll be that'll be well earned. So yeah. Okay. I'll see you down there. And officially we're done with the smokies. Do you wanna step across together? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> well. Oh. All right, let's get our permits out. Oh, nice. nice. Ah, good morning. We are just starting the long, long climb up uh, Snowbird Peak this morning. 
So straight out of the hostel, it's four miles. Straight up. Uh, the first climb of the day. But yeah, we stayed at Standing Bear Hostel last night, which was really good, really fun. I enjoyed it. It was like a little farm, old farmstead with loads of like cool, quirky little cabins and bunk houses. So we had our own little private one that had a little balcony overlooking the creek, which was really nice. And we, uh, you know, had some pizza, had a beer or two, sat around the campfire talking to the other hikers who were staying there. Yeah, it was a really lovely evening. Definitely, uh, definitely needed. <laughs> so we've got today, we've got a big day. We've got 15 miles with some big climbs at the beginning um, as we start our push towards Hot Springs where we'll actually have our second like proper day off. So, yeah. Just gotta keep going, don't stop. Just keep walking, even if you're doing tiny steps, just keep moving up the hill. Eventually be at the top, so. <laughs> I'll see you there. Hopefully there's some audio, it's very windy. But right over there is the Smoky Mountains. That's where we were the last know, five or six days or something. I'm losing count, but yeah. I suddenly get, get the scale of just, well, they're kind of in the clouds now, but I suddenly realize just how much taller they are than everything else around here. You kind of, you don't really get that sense when you're on them because you, you know, you're climbing five or six hundred feet every time over a peak, but you know, you get a real sense of how tall they are from from a distance. Ah, right, we're almost at the top of Max Patch. We should have good 360 degree, yeah, 360 degree views of of the Appalachians. But I don't know if we'll stay up there very long because it's quite windy, and we're only about two miles from the shelter. Right. Get going. So we're just down from, got down from Max Patch out of the wind, just walking down this path. It looks exactly like, if you've seen, if you've seen Lord of the Rings, you know where it kind of like looks like the road street, the, the yeah. road is shrinking, mm -hmm. and then like the well, Nazgul, nice scene, is it, the Nazgul come flying at them. Okay, well, let's, let's just hope that isn't what they say. Get off the road. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Oh, good evening. Um, oh, we finally made it to whatever shelter this is, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can tell, it's raining. <laughs> Set the tent up in the rain. Uh, and it's only going to get heavier in the night. But yeah, the shelter was full, so second night in the canvas it is. Um, our plan was. I think I mentioned earlier, our plan was that we were going to go, like, maybe like 14 miles uh, tomorrow, and then do the last three and do our zero then in Hot Springs. But looking at the, <laughs> looking on the far out, um, the comments for the next shelter don't look too promising, um, as... Someone, apparently some homeless guy, who with the nickname of LSD Larry, has taken up residence at the shelter. And apparently is, quote, friendly enough, but walks around the campsite at night growling. So, we'd rather not have a run-in with LSD Larry. So, 
we're probably going to try and push our biggest day yet, which will be 18 miles. Or oh, 17 or 18 miles into Hot Springs tomorrow. Um, we just need to hope we get signal on the way so we can call the hostel and see if they can change our reservation. Otherwise, we'll be staying with Larry, I guess. Um, or at least some campsite. We, if we can find somewhere to put our tent up away from Larry, <laughs> then we'll, uh, we'll do that instead. Um, but yeah, I think the only spot I could find for this tent was slightly on a on a bit of a slope, so I'm kind of slowly sliding off my pad, so I'm trying to bolster it all up, but yeah, let's, uh, hopefully the tent holds up, it should be fine, but yeah, I'll speak to you in the morning. Okay, hello from, where are we, Laughing Heart Hostel in uh, Hot Springs, North Carolina, so it is Sunday, it's our zero day, and I have no footage at all from yesterday, <laughs> so... Yesterday was a uh, very challenging day, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, as I'll explain shortly. Um, but yeah, it was uh, probably one of the tougher days we've had. Um, so yesterday was our biggest mile day yet, so we did um, just short of 18 miles. So we did push on um, to, get to, uh, to get to the hostel. Um, we didn't stay at the shelter. Well, Larry, L LSD Larry had moved on anyway, so we could have stayed there, <laughs> but we uh, no, we decided to to push on. Um, but it was basically raining all day. Um, there was lots of lots of climbs and then lots of like really difficult descents, like just straight down, uh, like muddy paths, some wet leaves, loose mud, everything. Um, so obviously it was a bit, I like slipped all over the place and at one point I actually slipped, tried to catch myself and completely fell over, resulting in completely shearing my, <laughs> one of my trekking poles in half. So that's not great. Um, so, well, I was thinking I was going to have to pay for a new pair, but as it turns out, um, when we got here, so one of the people we've sort of been hiking in and around, um, a guy called Stir Crazy, <laughs> had uh, just got himself some new trekking poles, so he has uh, graciously gifted me his uh, old pair, which are basically the exact same model as these, but the carbon fibre version. So, if anything, I've shed a bit of weight there, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so another example of the trail provides. Um, but yeah, so... Yesterday was rough, and I didn't really feel much like filming anything. So I'll just put the the mileage <laughs> and everything down here like I normally do. Um, but yeah, that was yesterday. We went out, went to uh, went to a brewery, got some tacos, and all was well <laughs> in the end. So today we've just been doing like our usual kind of town chores. So we've gone done our resupply. Uh, done all our laundry, we've made a mess of this this room that we're in. So like, all of our stuffs hanging up to air. We've got all our laundry out. Everything, you know, every piece of every surface is covered in gear. There's every all the gadgets plugged in, charging. But yeah, there's another few uh, few other people we've been hiking with recently are here, um, and we're making burgers and hot dogs at the hostel. So a bit of a cheaper night, but. Yeah, it's been uh, an expensive town stock, so I've gone and bought some other stuff, like I need a new headlamp, but I need to go return this now because it's not, I thought it was rechargeable, but it it is, but you need a proprietary charger and not a USB, I can't remember, anyway, so that's tomorrow's thing, before we get hit the trail I need to go and swap that out, um, but yeah, yeah, apologies for the lack of footage yesterday, I was just not in the mood, <laughs> so, but yeah, feeling much better today. Had a lovely walk around the uh, little town of Hot Springs. It's very nice. And yeah, we're just going to go gorge ourselves on burgers and hot dogs now. So yeah, I think that'll probably be the end of this one. And then uh, I think our next... Well, I'm not sure where our next big stop will be. We're going sort of around Irwin, Tennessee, on our way up to the uh, 
to Damascus and the border with Virginia, which will be our next state. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll catch you later.